I don't understand. Um, in number two, it says should be WGR five comma at six double colon is missing at six at number six. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Okay. Number six. Okay, gotcha. said the board went to the executive session, it should have said what it was for. And that's for a personnel issue. The personnel issue. Both of them are for personnel issues. I'm looking over the numbers for the, uh, for the bids, I'm not quite sure they're all correct. Do you want to do it? Uh, just give me a second here. Go. For the uh, WR, WJR lower project, I have Larry's bid at uh, 660910, where the, the minutes say 66410. 66910? Oh, no, 660090.10. $6,090.10. Is that number six? Mm -hmm. yeah, paragraph six. Paragraph six. All the other numbers look right. You should probably check that number out. We can go back to the original bids that are on the file. So, uh, if you don't mind, we can check that later. There's no need to go ahead and do that. Okay, we can check that. Other than that, I think the numbers look correct.
I'll, I'll move that we accept the minutes with the changes that have been made uh, and the conditional number for the Larry Brown bid on the, uh, the lower project being verified okay. um, by, the, by our records. I'd second that. Any other discussion? Hearing one, all in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, the July 23rd minutes have been approved with the corrections. And the next is the July 25th. There's a special meeting to uh, award the bids. Um, there is a difference in the right, uh, numbers on this and this. You talk, what are you talking about? Well, Larry Brown was awarded the upper contract. So if you talk about the upper, The numbers are right on the, on the uh, upper project. This one, which number are you correct? Both of them are the upper project. <coughs> no, I think this is a. Uh... Upper. To Larry Brown. Right, well, this number. And this one is upper. Yes, and the reason for that is because um, we also determined that Larry didn't add correctly oh, okay. for his bid, and uh, the unit prices for his bid weren't the same as the total price. They were off by nine dollars, I think, and we decided that it was we were going to use the, the unit price sum, and that's why the uh, uh, that's that's what the numbers we used for the. Uh, I just knew that there were two different numbers. Yeah, that no, was because of Larry's addition. So the minutes were reflected correctly on the twenty third. On the twenty fifth, we used a different number to award the contract. On your computer, mm -hmm. what are the bids for the upper project? The the, the bids that we we, we the you total see? bids we opened on the twenty third. Mm -hmm. uh, the upper project for Larry Brown was ninety five four eighty six mm -hmm. thirty five. Uh, Amadon construction one hundred eight three thirty two point ninety. Mm -hmm. Fitzpatrick was fifty nine seven twenty nine point zero. Okay. Now, 
ultimately that project went to Larry. Went to Larry, and I think the amount we um, that was the one I chose got. Was, the, was the sum of the unit prices. Yeah. Can I move that we uh, accept the minutes for July 25th? Second. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Minutes for the 25th of July are <coughs> um, Next are the July 26th. This was uh, emergency meeting. Do you want to do the 25th first or the 26th? We just did, we just did the 25th. We just did the 25th. All right. That's okay. That's okay. Writing on the wrong end. That's okay. Um. I find the thing wrong with the mic. If we accept the uh, minutes. I second it. As written on the 26th. Any further discussion? Hearing them, all in favor say aye. 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 Minutes of the 26th of July are approved. Next is to review the approved select board call orders. <coughs> GL number 3, PR 6, PR 5, PR 4. for the Highway Transfer Station Town Office and Listers. Um, we can go to public concerns. Andy, are you here for public concerns? Or are you here for the whole meeting? What's that? Are you here for the whole, I mean, are you here for the whole meeting or are you just public concerns? Uh, probably just public concerns. Okay, we can do public concerns next. Andy? Um, just uh, checking on the status of the sidewalks because I haven't heard I haven't heard anything since yeah. last year I, except through the grapevine. So I understand that you got two bids and they were too high. Is that right? No, we had two bids. One of them was disqualified because they didn't have a technical uh, a form that was supposed to have been submitted with the uh, with the bid. It's a it's a form the state requires right which, which verifies the fact that they're qualified to do that kind of work. Uh, because they didn't submit that form, that bid was disqualified. Okay. Unfortunately, that was a, a bid well within the engineering uh, estimates. And the other one? The other one was a bid that was about $150,000 higher than the engineering estimates. And we disqualified that bid because, again, uh, that was too high. So, wh where are we now? The, the, the project needs to be rebid. Okay. Now, we could have rebid it, we could have rebid the project then and there. However, by the time that was was done, that would have put the construction right in the middle of uh, tourist season. Right. And we felt that we didn't want to uh, uh, do that kind of project in the middle of tourist season. So we decided we would wait until November to go out to bid for construction to be done in the spring of 2013. Okay. Um, just a couple questions. We, we, you guys started a sidewalk fund a number of years ago, is that right? Mm -hmm. Well, the sidewalk fund's been in existence for a long time. Right. right. We began funding it uh, with, with additional amounts getting ready for this project, correct? Right. So do you know how much was in the fund or how much is in there now? Um, do we have a treasure? Total? I don't have. She, I didn't. Carrie's been working hard this last two years. Do we have years. one for the uh, previous meeting by any chance? I don't have it with me. I want to say it. Is it general ledger or anything? Is it budget status report? There should be one for um, liability side. Uh, 
that's the, again, that's, those are money that we're going to be moving in, uh, uh, in well, later on. All right. This is... Uh, Let's see. If we can't find it, if it's all right with Andy, I can have yeah, to call you tomorrow. Yeah, you don't have to spend any time. I'm just... Uh, you, you know that I, I'm still uh, against the five foot. Well, I'll wait till you guys. That's, done. that's to be moved. Mm -hmm. that, that's the GL count of money for this year's budget. So that has yet to be moved. That's yet to be moved. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm still. I, I, I don't think the five foot sidewalk thing is a, is a good idea. I'm not alone in that opinion. And I was just wondering, because over the years, I mean, the sidewalks have been in the condition they're in for a while. And I, I, I don't think that the town has done anything on its own to repair them from the sidewalk fund, like from three years ago, or four years ago, or five years ago. They just sat there. And so I'm just trying to get an update on, on what's, what's going on. I would still think that the town could do this on their own. They, they could have been working for the last couple of years to repair what they wanted to repair. Um, anyway, that's, uh, that's the gist of it. If we don't have any specifics, there's not too much no. you know, to discuss. But well, the, certainly the town could have done something over the last few years uh, with the resources that we had we wouldn't be able to do nearly as many linear feet of sidewalk if without the grant. So right. we, chose, we chose to wait for the grant to do as much as we can rather than do what little we could with the money that... Uh, right. That no, I, I, I understand the idea. And one of, one of the um, objections that a number of us have is that because of the project covering whatever it is, uh, uh, a third or 40 percent or whatever it is of the sidewalks five feet and no plans for the future to do anything with the other sidewalks which were deemed to be okay uh, I think that was one of the big concerns that the town would have say a third nice new sidewalks five feet and no plans to do anything for the other sidewalks where on the other hand because all the sidewalks are now our four feet, is that if the town did repair them at four feet, we would still be, uh, it, would, it, it would all be the same. So that is still one of the big concerns. So, one, we get an update and... Uh, well, that's the idea. Okay. And I'll have Terry call you on tomorrow on how much money. Okay, it doesn't have to be tomorrow, but whatever. Yeah, okay. thank you. Okay, thank you, Andy. Any other public concerns? Okay. Um, number four is to open the bids for the Pikes Falls Lower Project and the NRCS JAMA 11-017D, which is degrees in the West Jamaica Road sites. Okay, we'll have to follow the bids and, and we'll uh, I'll record them on the Do the NRC as part of first?
bid is for $5,200. Okay, I should point out that uh, we aren't rewarding anything tonight. Uh, all we're doing is working the bids. We're going to uh, meet again on Wednesday night to actually award these contracts, if I recall. And in the meantime, we'll be validating um, some of the information on these, on these bids. Does, the NRC does not require to break that correct? It's, it's, yeah. it's Wednesday off the 15th at 6.30. Okay. Let's do the uh, high clause road. Okay. There was only three bids for that one. For the NRC, it's right. Okay. Who was the... Um, the last one was GBT Maintenance of Townsend. GBT or GBT? George Paul Thomas. GPT. Uh, maintenance for $5,200. Uh, I don't know who that is. I don't know who it is. Is it Dale Clark? Yeah. yeah. It's signed by Dale Clark. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Good. For the lower price wall project. Check is included with this one from GPT again. This is uh, Dale Clark. Okay. He's only going to read off the uh, the total. If anybody's interested in seeing the uh, the unit prices, they're part of the public record, <coughs> so you're welcome to look at it. Right, the total for all the projects is one one hundred eighty thousand one eight zero. Yeah, even no, and three hundred twenty five dollars. Okay, one eight zero three two five point eight seven point eight seven. Yeah, one hundred eighty dollars, one hundred eighty thousand three hundred twenty five dollars and eighty seven cents. And he has it broken down by by projects as required. Okay. And has a checklist. Construction and check. And the bottom line is 204,000. 502.00. 204552.00. This is lane construction.
And it led me to another project. I wanted to do a number of other projects. Perhaps not. There's, there's a number of them for it. Okay. Uh, again, this is the Land Construction Corporation. It's Basin Brothers Trucking, Westminster, B-A-Z-I-N. Bid bond. And the bottom line is $220,000. happening is, as everybody knows, that we have that big wash that's up on Russian Maker Road, which is site number three. And with last week's threat of torrential rains that were anticipated and stuff, Larry and his crew, who has, Larry has the upper contract on Russian Maker Road and stuff. And <clears throat> with the protection of the culverts up there and stuff, and they had just cleaned out the pipes up there by flushing them out and stuff, that it was kind of important that we try to do some kind of a protection, a retaining wall protection up there and stuff. So um, what I have asked Larry to do is kind of sketch together what he thought, um, what he would do to protect those elements up there and stuff as partial bank until we could find additional funding down the road. With this being in mind also, um, talking with Paul and myself, we've been working with a lot of the FEMA projects, we're going to approach uh, VTRAN or AVOT and um, revising our scope of work for this particular project because we feel that FEMA had not included enough information to protect our roads or at least provide enough funding for our road project up there. So with that being said, Larry has proposed to um, install two retaining walls on the inlet and the beach, each of these inlets, which is in uh, culvert number 26 and culvert number 27, as you see on phase one with a ditch running between the two of them. And also, on the right side, above the retaining wall, we have to provide some kind of a, a drainage system, which will be just a, a, a small trench, which is this here, to, to allow whatever water seeping from the bank to come down into the ditch line and stuff. Um, the walls for color 26 are roughly 20 feet by 8 feet high, and in the bottom, of the basin at the inlet area, we're putting in you know, small.
small cell we're grabbed. On the other end, at culvert 27, the wall's roughly 20, uh, I'm sorry, 35 feet with a height of probably approximately 15 feet. And again, that's from the bottom of the invert coming up the wall. And as you notice, the slide up there is much closer to the road area and it's very high. So this wall has to be a little bit more substantial. Um, with that being said, uh, Larry's, Larry's come up with a quote or an estimate for the project covering uh, the removal of approximately 120 yards of clay, um, a building a stone retaining <coughs> um, rock wall or using filter fabric, uh, matting, seating, mulch, labor, and excavator for a cost of $10,915. On the second phase is where we'll be taking the river material, the excess material on the banks, where the banks are going to be re, uh, refurbished by placing uh, riprap material on the banks. That excess material, instead of hauling it all the way down to the town or somewhere, could be used up here on this site. It'll save the town money on trucking with the materials and stuff. So what Larry and I are proposing to do is trench in approximately three feet of big rock and then creating a berm whereby all the excess material would be placed over the top of that. And as, <clears throat> as he specifies, he's got big rock to be dug in at, at three feet, using all large rocks to, to hold back the bank slide, smaller rocks to be used behind the retaining wall to help <clears throat> stop the clay slide. This is considered phase two, and he's including filter fabric, matting, seed and mulch, and excavator and labor time for a cost of $4,675. $4,675. Now, as, as you know, we're, we're kind of going a little backwards here. I would prefer to go with, um, you know, the FEMA. Um, we, uh, and Paul and I have just found out that we don't have to go through an appeal process on our projects, on the work papers that we don't agree with FEMA and stuff, but there is a process of now of revising our work scopes and stuff, and that gets approved by BLT, and they approach FEMA for the additional funding. And Paul and I feel that's probably the route we really should go. Again, uh, the question comes up with Larry. Um, Larry's up to try and protect what he can, and yet keep him going and stuff. So we're kind of looking for some, some suggestions from you people. Should he proceed? Should he stop? Or you know, can we can we proceed forward and go after these additional funds with your support? So the total cost of this project would be fifteen five eighty. Correct. If FEMA funded it later on, this would be a throwaway project, would you? It's this would be considered a, uh, a change in order of work because it's additional to what Larry's doing now up there. Right, but if FEMA decided to fund that project, would we be doing something different? Or would we be doing this? We'd be doing this. No, no. This, this, is, this looks to me, and I think Bob and I, this is, and with Larry's position, this looks like the best way of doing it. Right. And because FEMA historically does not want to deal with slopes, as we all know, this is right on the road. It's not a case of if, it's a case of like now. So, so your thinking is, is that you, we, we would do it now, and hope that FEMA will fund it later. Yes. As an emergency project. Yes. As opposed to Well, as an emergency or as a, as a permanent permanent picture up there to at least for now to, to at least buy some time until we can get some additional funding to do more with that slope up there. Like very similar to what you're doing with Route 8 or um, uh, the Pice Falls Road 7 section up there. Use a size. But this here, we're just trying to buy some time just to pull that bank back. Well, like creating a maintenance site for the town. So I guess what I'm asking is, you just said if, if we do more, so you're suggesting that FEMA might do more than just this. Uh, if, if FEMA were we get grant money, we do more. If yeah, if we're talking about this. We are up against a business where FEMA doesn't want to deal with slopes. Right. And so that's in there. That's that's buried deeply in their little project manual. So. What we're doing is really protecting the road, not doing anything to the slope. What needs to be done is something to the slope. Right. However, what my question is, is that if FEMA decides they're going to fund something, if 
our, our change order to FEMA yes. is successful, will it be to do this project? Yes. Or will it be to do something else? To pay for this project. Okay. And just like this. Just, just as it is. And will they not pay for it if we do it on our own first? Do you think? In other words, because Larry's there, it makes more sense to do it while his equipment's there. Sure. However, that might mean that we have to pay for it all ourselves. Up, up front, and then get reimbursed by FEMA later. Right, well, we, or will FEMA say, well, you've already done the work, therefore we're not going to pay you? I, I don't think that would be the approach because we, you know, again, we've been just touching base with, with uh, the higher officials up in, the, up in the state right now who are working on FEMA projects and stuff like that. So you're telling us the best route to go is to the revised scope of work, scope of work. for their approval. This way, we've already got a project, and we've got a scope of work. We're just we're just changing, as opposed to a no a whole new concept of going after the whole thing. But I don't I don't think that, I know that. I'm not going to touch that. So my only question is, will they pay for it if we do it first? NRCS, for example, has a rule that if you do it before they approve, exactly, yeah. they're not paying for it. Right. And I want to know if I'm curious as to whether FEMA would have a similar approach if you I, go ahead and do it. I, I can't see the FEMA. I don't know how they would go. All I can do is that my shot is working with the state yeah. who will work on our behalf. We, I've seen the, 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 what you're talking about with NRCS and I was concerned because if this was NRCS, we couldn't do it here exactly right. I haven't found the same, <clears throat> the same um, words, same indication in FEMA. Now, there's a lot of it in this. <laughs> I don't know 100%, but so far we haven't found anything like that. It looks like we've got to change the scope. Larry's moving pretty fast, so we're moving as fast as we can over the other. other are, are we going to be in trouble for not bidding this out? I would say no, because it's, it's more of a change order. It's more in line with what Larry's doing on this project already. We're not, we're not really going for another project. We're just right. finding so something. What is the bid up there say to do with that project? The road and the bank and, and putting that walls on the uh, culverts. So if you're going to protect your culverts, then we need to go a little further than that. And that's something that FEMA didn't pick up on. I mean, I don't, I don't care. If you, I mean, yeah. it's obvious you're right there. I just don't know if someone's going to come in and say, hey, how come it weren't bid? Well, th th when we're talking about this, I'm thinking is that it's not a new project which we would have to go bid. It's just a change in the project that was already approved. Right. And with a change of scope, there's nothing I've read, and I emphasize that I could have missed something, but nothing we've read so far that shows we have to rebid a change of scope. Change of scope is handled between us and, and, and the state. If I can say something, the reason the name came about is when we went to put headwalls on these culverts that were in the plan. First of all, we couldn't find the culverts because they were buried. The clay slide had already covered them, um, one in particular, and it was full. So we had to clean it out and, and flush it out. And, and, and it was gonna do it again. There was, no, there was no reason for it not to. It was gonna keep, it was, it was still seeping. And it, it was only a matter of the next time it rained, it was going to bury it back up again. And so what we, the work we had put into it was going to be done for nothing. Um, I, I just felt we had to do something and I, to protect what we had done. And I asked Bob to look at it and, and he had his engineers look at it. Uh, somebody from his office came and looked at it and, and uh, they came back in a day or two with a print a sketch what they thought this solution would be and uh, in the meantime I had thought about it and, and drawn up something that I thought and they were very similar um, so we between the two of us we thought we made a hit on something that would work um, and uh, aside from that too he's also indicated this is on the high side of an estimate to cover his bases and stuff and as things are progressing up there, the cost for this is going to be a lot less. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even question the price. I mean, I'm just... It's going together much better than... We've already... Before that rain on Friday, we worked like the devil to... Uh, particularly the upper one to protect it. 
and uh, the work we did, um, we didn't have any problem with that rain. It, the rain didn't come to the magnitude that they talked that, that it was going to, but I, I think that it would have held anyway. It, it, it really did a good job, and, and uh, I'd like to, but I'd like to see that it went the rest of the way so that it, I don't think it'll bother ever again if we, if we do what I plan on doing. And it, it has gone easier and, and faster than I anticipated. Um, that, so the cost, I think, is going to be less. I, I know it's going to be less, and how much less, I can't say right this minute, but I, um, I know it's going to be less than what my estimate was. Yeah. Would it be detrimental if we didn't do anything? That's what you're telling us. So it, we, we really should do this. We should not. We should do it rather, rather than decide. We should, we should do something. We should do we really something. Should do I something. mean, something has to be done. When we were out there the other day walking the thing, and I'm looking at this, and it does, it occurs to me, and I'm not an engineer, but I can see dirt coming at me, and if we don't, we're going to lose the road again. Right. And even if we have to pay for it ourselves, if we don't, we're going to lose the road again. Because it's just going to fill up the thing and it's going to come right over. Because it's sitting right, it's not like it's a long way from the edge of the road. So I'm thinking that even if we don't get reimbursed, it's, it's an investment we probably ought to make. But I'm sure when we're talking with our other plans with the state and stuff, that they're really willing to work with us any, any which way they can. So I will write a, a real good narrative and you know, bring it to you people first. Because I think that it's like we need to do a change order first, and then once we get that, then I'll send that, the rest of the information out to the state for them to start reviewing it as soon as possible. But this is a large project. This is a large project. Okay. So therefore, in theory, they should reimburse us for our actual costs. Yes. Unless we, if there's a change of scope that includes a change in cost, and that's where the catch. If there's a change of scope, we can do it. If it includes an increase in cost, then we have to submit it to all these different agencies. And this will, of course, increase the cost. So that's why. But they're pretty, they're pretty reasonable. Well, from the conference we went to last week, they're really encouraging change of scope instead of other kinds of appeals and stuff. Yeah, you know, so you have a tendency to just bog down a lot of the appeal processes, and a lot of people don't win. Plus, the, the good news is the change of scope goes to the state. The appeals go to FEMA. Okay. So it's a little bit easier to manage. Mm -hmm. All right. You convinced me I'll move that we uh, authorize for phase one and a maximum of 10915 and phase two and a maximum of 4675 to do the uh, Project as sketched out by Larry. Do we have a second? Second. Do you have any further discussion? Well, can I can I second that? This has nothing to do with your. Uh, okay. Right. Okay. Any further? Can you repeat the numbers again? Uh, Ten thousand nine hundred and fifteen for phase one, and four thousand six hundred and seventy-five for phase two, maximum. First, we have a second. Any further discussion? The only thing I'd like to add to my mind is I would like to see Larry continue in that project and not wait for a response from FEMA. I mean, from uh, the scope. We need to do no, the we scope. We need to do it. It's got, he's there. Exactly. So I think it's more to have him come back and, and finish it up. Exactly. So, just so that we understand that he's going to go ahead and, and he's on scene, get the job done. Yeah. And we'll see. The thing that this to move on it quickly is that we're going to use that material that we're going to take out of right. site number 17 that otherwise was going to have to be trucked up at the dump, dumped over the bank or whatever the, whatever the plan was. And I, I figured on using that to do that stabilization, use that material. Um, one, it's close there, and that's what kept the cost down is because we get some material we can use that's close by. And if we wait, I can't do the other part of the job and thinking that maybe two weeks down the road they're going to say okay. Well, I've got to wait for two weeks before I can do that stream bank um, to finish the job. If we could keep going, I can finish the whole thing 
in a two week period of time. Yeah, I think yeah. we should continue to just keep on working and finish yeah. the project. Why couldn't we uh, move the culverts up the road just a little bit and down the road just a little bit? Is there a reason we couldn't do that? The culvert? Well, I think you're going to be running into the ledge where the culvert 27 is right at the edge of the, of the wash now, right. and 26 is on the far end of the other side. Right. Um, those were where the culverts were originally. And I think because of the hill coming down for 26, there's no other low spot to go in that culvert. So 26 can't really be moved, and 27, I think, you can move. If anywhere, they're going to move closer to each other, and that's not going to help. And if you haven't had a chance, take a ride up, and you can see what Larry's been doing out there. He's been Doing great work. Thank you. Okay. Are we all set with that? We need to vote. Did you need to vote? Did you need to vote? Yeah. Just that was a discussion. Oh, discussion. We're still on discussion. See, time's going by. Yeah, so much. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Motion to carry. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Thank you, Bob, very much. Um, and I will see that I, I, I'll read you an official change order written out okay. of the project. Thank you. Now, number six, discuss appointment for Wyndham Regional Commission. I was had a conversation with Elaine Beckett uh, a couple days ago, and she reminded me that we that she made a presentation to the select board several weeks ago. Her term runs out in this month, and uh, she asked what we were doing, and I didn't have an answer. Well, um, I have a partial answer. Oh, yes. I talking with um, David oh, um, yeah. Makes, uh, yeah, who's on the planning commission. He was thinking of it. I, it was just a thought that had crossed his mind. I don't know if he's still interested or not. Do you know if he is or not? No, we haven't had a meeting, but I know that he was thinking. About he was thinking it about it back when um, Elaine came and, oh, talked, good, good. and talked about. It. He was very yeah, interested. Pardon me. Our next meeting. I think having a member of the planning commission, but our planning, right? Is it? I think that's just a really good idea. Yeah. It is. We can have two, but nobody's jumping up um, to be on it. Mm -hmm. on, I mean, not on the commission, on the Wyndham Regional. Mm -hmm. We can have two representatives. Um, I will call David to see if he's still interested. Um, And then get back to you and back to the planning commission. And on their meeting, they can chat with them too and see. Has the date been set for our. No, I just got back from vacation, so I haven't even had time to even think about that yet. Um, she, yeah. said she was asked to chair a meeting the first week in September, so she's going to not extend her time into September, but she's going to chair that meeting even though oh. her. her uh, I think the first of September or the last of August in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Number seven is to sign the 2012 tax rate. Um, the tax rate, the school tax rate has gone down a little bit. Um, 2012 yeah. resident, by the way, thank you. What? Resident tax rate is 1.5247. And for the non-resident tax rate is 1.4948. Would you repeat this one? First one. Okay. First, I'll, I'll start, start from the bottom. Let me start from the top. Okay. The total municipal tax rate for taxes to be raised, um, tax rate is 0 0.3043. Education tax for non-resident is 1.1905. Homestead grand list, 1.2204. And then the total resident tax rate, 1.5247. Non-resident tax rate, 1.4948. Okay, um, the homestead.
state of Kansas. 1.2204. Resident tax rate, 1.5247. Point five two four seven. Non resident tax rate one point four nine four eight. It's interesting that the non resident is lower than the resident. Yeah, it ha I asked Terry about that today, and it has something to do with the amount of children that are going to the school that are residents here. So, because I did ask for that. But that's, that's why that's rate is different. So we need a motion to it's really higher. It is a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. And how does that compare to last year? I don't know. I did, she doesn't have it last year. So I don't know. There was something in the paper there that showed all the different towns. I don't know if people saw it. Other towns were that way. Some other towns. Some other towns. Okay, I missed it. It's total every town. In, I don't know if it was just Wyndham County or Wyndham and Bennington or no, I don't know. Uh -huh. Okay, well, Terry, you know, you can call Terry and ask her if you want. Um, so once so we accept this as, a, as our tax rates, then uh, we can send out our tax bills? Right, and then they can send out the tax bills. Yeah. So can we have a motion? I'll, uh, I'll move that we accept the tax rates as presented. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Let's read to public concerns. Um, one of the major questions, though, is going to be your question. Yeah. What's the difference? Especially it's a little, uh, Terry said the tax, taxes aren't going to go up because of the, the school tax rate went down. So we should be, we should be okay. So it might just, it just sort of balance out, out. yes. And, and that's after our abatements have been adjusted? Yes. I mean, not our abatements, our properties, properties who, yeah. who receive damage. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it, it hasn't gone up, it's gone down a little bit. So, because of the school, so we should be okay this year. Although our municipal taxes are up a little bit from last year, so. So maybe they'll just even us out. So, hopefully that'll take care of that. Um, we have a letter from Matthew Coburn, agent for the right of way. This is for Bridge, Route 30 Bridge. Route 30 Bridge is right here by the fire department, right on Route 30. It's bridge number 30 on Route 30. Um, and this is the letter stating for us to sign and the right of way sheet for all the folks that live near the Route 30 bridge, which includes the town of Jamaica. And this here is the is this to agree that uh, we're waiving our right? Uh, they're waiving our um, rights for compensation. Now, is this to be signed by us or by our agent of deeds? This one is to be signed by all of us, just like the last one, the one Route 100 bridge. That's signed by us, and then we have to wait for all the other folks to do theirs, and then there will be a hearing scheduled site visit for bridge number 30, which is the Route 30 bridge. Site visit will begin at 10 o'clock, followed by a hearing at 11 o'clock on September 17, 2012. What was the time? The time is 10 o'clock 
for this site visit, and the hearing is at 11 o'clock at this office. At this office? In this office, yes. So what is your pleasure on the right of way you're signing off? Compensation if they have to take a little bit of our property and to work on our property and to work on it, also if they have to take some of our property. Um, then we won't be paid for that. We won't be paid for that. Right. And they do it to all the landowners that are abutting the bridge that we don't have to use, and that will be up to their discretion what they want to do. Mm -hmm. So, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. on the agenda. Is there any other business that may come before the summer board? Brian? Mm, all set. No? Um, I got a letter or an email from uh, a woman who represents uh, a, a group of uh, towns where she's actually, let me tell you exactly what it says. Um, trying to do is a group of, uh, of, of people who are trying to designate Route 100 from Londonderry South to the, to the Massachusetts border as a historic uh, drive. And uh, they're looking for a letter of support from all the towns uh, who, are, who are interested in this. I know there are towns like Wilmington has done it, Wardsboro has done it. Uh, Dover has done it. Uh, there are some other towns that have also got on board. And they're asking the town of Jamaica if they're interested in, in getting on board with trying to make that section of 100 a historic uh, or a scenic byway. What that means is that we would be on the Vermont website that they have for the scenic byways. So any tourists who are uh, interested in traveling through Vermont would, who, and are interested in traveling routes that they would deem more scenic uh, would, would go on this website or perhaps look at some of the maps that are printed uh, to, and they would now, now note that this section of Route 100 is a scenic, would be a scenic byway. The advantage to the town, if we were to participate or in, give our support, would be that uh, hopefully there would be more tourist traffic coming through town. and. People might stop and either stay in one of our bed and breakfasts or eat at one of our restaurants or shop at one of our galleries. Uh, um, the disadvantage, of course, is that there might be more traffic through town and all that entails. So uh, I told her that I would bring it up at our board meeting tonight and get a feeling for what we as a board felt and uh, if we would like to have her come in and present to us She's willing to uh, come into one of our meetings to present to us. Uh, however, um, to me it seems like the increased traffic is good for business and, and uh, I think we ought to support that. I don't know how the rest of you feel. The only, the only question I have is if this gets involved in the historic Vermont process, before we get our sidewalks in, are we going to have to jump through more historic uh, review of anything we do on that, that route? It's, it's more scenic than it is historic. Yeah. And Londonderry was concerned about some issues uh, regarding would it uh, uh, affect things like the value or, or 
what they would have to do as part of a land procurement process. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, it has no effect at all on any of that. The only effect it has is the website mm -hmm. and the people, tourists, going on the website to try to find avenues for them to travel through Vermont. So this is really a kind of a casual designation rather than an official Correct. state designation of scenic driveway or something where we'd have to paint our... I think it would still be a de state designation, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't give us any... Uh, it wouldn't go in the same kind of trappings of the historical where we can only paint buildings certain colors and have certain Nothing kind of... I'm in favor of, the, of, the, uh, of being on the website and getting the traffic. I'm not sure I want to complicate matters anymore, but if that doesn't do it, then I can be supportive. Yeah. I don't know whether London area has changed their mind or not. I do know that they were against it because they were concerned about planning issues. Well, should we have our maybe come and speak to us? I think that's a good mm -hmm. idea. I know she was, I told her our next meeting was the 27th. I think she's planning on going to the town of Stratton on the 27th. I don't know if she could uh, she do, two? do two in one night. Um, if she could do two in one night, then we might be able to get it for the 27th. Okay, you want to see if she could come in and see what her time frame is, maybe? She could do it in order to talk to you. She could, we could pick a time for her to be here, and then a time she could check it Stratton. I don't know if we'd be willing to, uh, uh, you know, if she couldn't get here before, let's say, 8.30, Right, and we should have to get here at a reasonable time. Or we'd be willing to put her on first so she could get over the strap. We could do that. Yeah, we can do that. The strap's only got a mile in the Route 100. <laughs> Shouldn't take that long. Won't take that long. <laughs> um, you know, why don't you check with her and see what she'd like to do? Okay. okay. Up on Dover Mountain. Where? Dover Mountain. There's one other thing I'd like to bring up, okay. if you don't mind. No. Um, I got a, uh, just got this tonight from the Wyndham Solid Waste Management District. Uh, during the last legislation session, there have been a number of, um, of uh, recycling issues that have come to the, to the state. One of them is the uh, Vermont Mercury Lamp Law. And I haven't had a chance to, uh, to review this, and I'll probably report to you more on the next meeting. But what I did want to get us as a board thinking about is that this new law will, uh, will, will, will I think, require residents to, to recycle for us involved in the like. And uh, we need to start thinking about our transfer station and how we can uh, handle things like this. We, we tried mercury bulbs at one time, if you recall, but we didn't really have a facility that was able to handle that. Uh, uh, what was happening is we had these boxes and they were sitting in this container and the container got wet, the boxes got wet and all of a sudden they started falling out of boxes and we broke a couple of them. So it's not, we, we did not have a good setup. Uh, we, need to, we might start needing to think about uh, coming up with a little building, the transfer station, which might allow us to recycle more but these are not hazardous waste, they're like semi-hazardous waste. And it might involve some training that we might need to send them to. Uh, but what's happening is the Wyndham Solid Waste District is uh, trying to help the transfer station down. There are some towns in the district which don't have transfer stations. Mm -hmm. They have curbside pickup. There are other towns that have transfer stations uh, that do not have or a whole lot of curbside pickup. And the, the, the district is going to try to help towns like us with transfer stations, help us manage these, these new laws that, that are coming down. Just for your knowledge, there's a new law that just came down to this session, which in, by 2015 will mandate recycling. Recycling will be a mandatory thing. And in fact, a tipping fee will be required by 2015 which means that we will have to come up with a strategy for charging for our bags that are now dumped into our compactor. That is a new, uh, a new law that is coming up. The reason for that law is the fact that one of our landfills in the north part of the state is closing. Uh, we're losing landfills sites. 
we need to do something to divert some of this uh, uh, waste away from the landfills. The first step is to make recycling mandatory with this tip and with enforcing it by the tipping fee. So this is coming down. The district is trying to help us um, begin to you know begin to work it out, work out the details. Uh, but just as a as a heads up, this is coming down. The second thing that's coming down a few years later is composting, mandatory composting. By the year 2020, uh, food waste will not be allowed in the landfill. Food waste either must be composted in your home, in your backyard, or it must be provided for by the towns. Uh, so, and by food waste, we're also talking about yard waste as well. Things like leaves, stuff like that. That's not as big an issue for us because not a whole lot of our people uh, right, right, you know, bring leaves to the transfer station. It's not a big problem. But just to let you know that these initiatives are being done by the state and we're going to have to deal with them in a few years. But the first one is the Mercury Law, which I just got. Mm -hmm. What about the, um, I don't know the name of it, the lights that are the most efficient, the, the, the squiggly ones? Yeah, those are part of this, I think. Oh, okay, because right now, you really don't know where to take them. Right, and right now, we have to take them to Brattleboro. You can take them to, I think, places that sell them. There's a couple places, like True Value, mm -hmm. that will take them. They'll take them for nothing. Or you can take them to the Green Solid Waste District. We ought to start thinking about taking them in our facility, mm -hmm. but we have to do better than what we were doing before, which was that little building that says close on it. Yeah. That, that didn't work. So that we need to start thinking about doing something. That's the end of my report. Thank you. Paul? I have a couple of things. Um, one of which is as I'm reading this, <clears throat> looks like there's supposed to be two places for us to sign it. And it's probably a typo, it's probably some minor little thing, but legal paperwork. It starts out as page one of three, and then here where we sign this is page two of two. So either there's a page missing. Probably not nothing. It's just something we should be aware of. And it does look like it's supposed to sign in two places. Two places. Does that make sense? Yeah. Anyhow, uh, two other quick topics. <clears throat> One of them is actually for Brian. I got a, a call today again from Mr. Doss. And he's continuing to ask us um, what the progress is on finding out about the damage that he said occurred secondary rotted trucks. I already told you. Yeah, he called again today. Yeah. I tried to have him call you, but apparently I don't know if he did or not. No. Nope. Part of the concern with him, we told um, Bob and I walked the, walked the property a couple weeks ago. So how was a month ago? A month ago. And we didn't see it. And you had given me some other information about it, which frankly did not spring to mind when I had him on the phone. Because I couldn't remember exactly what the conversation was. I spilled it all out. And then after he had called, I walked up there and it looked like someone had drove down with a truck or a Jeep or... Mm -hmm. But not the big ones. No. No. Well, he's saying that he knows who the driver was, that he saw it. And, and that was sort of the conversation he had with us, because Bob and I talked to him this morning as he called up. And he said he knows who the driver was, even though our understanding was the rock trucks actually went that way. Anyhow, you understand it? So he says there's still places the rock truck went? Yeah, because that's what he talked about. He's saying that he believes the rock trucks, that he saw the rock trucks and he identified the driver of the rock truck. Even went though, in a different place from. Could you tell whether he's talking about the different place where that we walked? No. Well, well, we found out, because when I talked to Tommy Dano, the trucks that they drove came up O'Brien's, came over to the roadway that goes to. Doss Road, the back way into the field, and then they tried coming down the hill, down Doss Road, to make that real sharp curve. He's claiming that, Mr. Doss is, that the trucks went the other direction, out towards the cemetery, which meant cutting back through the backyard, or the front yard, I guess you could say, did. up through there and down. Now, when Paul and I walked out there, we could not see any evidence of wide track marks, and this is what I said to him. We could not find... No, I pulled it up after all of that. Oh, you had pulled it up off since then. I, I moved it up last fall. Okay. 
But when Paul and I had gone out, we had seen small tire tracks down today, and we agreed that those weren't the big trucks. So we don't know who was in there, and that's what I tried to assure him. But he's insisting that it was the big trucks that did the damage there. And he was up there today. So he's basically looking for some kind of resolution, even if you just kind of touch base with him and talk to him. And well, it don't sound like he's going to believe that we swooped it up. Yeah. We should at least try, because he's calling. Him. And it was about the fifth call he made so far. He said he was here today. He yeah. said he was up there today. I want to walk all over the place. I couldn't see. And I had, of course, the world's fastest untrained eye. <laughs> so I'm not the guy to ask. But it certainly didn't look like any of really big white spots to me. No, and there's plenty of new fresh hunting spots. It wasn't like there was a lack of tracks. So our thinking is that we've already handled the situation. That's, That's why Ryan has to address to him. Yeah. Sure. But you can speak to him. The other, the other, um, other, com other conversation I had recently that y'all should be aware of is, <clears throat> excuse me, the gentleman who owns the Sugar Shack, Mr. Rybold? Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, called. And he had a conversation while I was out with a uh, woman from the bridge people. Kristen Higgins. Kristen Higgins. And also with uh, the a &R representative, Todd Menees. And they gave him information about the new possible money that's coming in uh, late August or September for a third wave of HF, HFGP processes. And got him thinking that he's going to get some money. Who, who's he? This is the gentleman who owns the Sugar Shack. Right there in the corner. Third in. Water Street. Water Street. Right the I don't know the official address, but it really refers to the Sugar Shack. Um, I tried to explain to him, and then this is what I want you all to understand, that the rules for the HMGP included a, a caveat that if the property was not more than 50% damaged, then you must do a cost-benefit analysis before FEMA will entertain the idea of reimbursing us for the purchase of the property. Here's a piece of property that just withstood the biggest flood we've had in a long time, sitting on the ledge with minimal damage. I don't anticipate a cost-benefit analysis is going to help at all. True, he lost his, his septic system, but that's not included. The thing wants to know what happened to the structure, not otherwise things. So he is still concerned about that. He, not, he asked me to talk to Todd Menees, who is the AR guy, and I talked. I left three messages and an email, and he hasn't called back yet. I'm not sure he wants to pursue it any more than he has to, but I think we as a board need to understand that the criteria may not be met, even if we were in the mood to buy more property. I don't think that the criteria is. Having said that, cost-benefit analysis takes a lot of time, it's expensive, and it's a real uh, strenuous activity. And it'll take a lot of time if that's something that somebody's interested in having to do, but I think that it's a dead end. It sounds you know, like it is. Yeah. Success, yeah. A real success potential. Yeah, we're talking about saying, you know, give us a couple of hundred thousand dollars to prevent yeah. you from having to spend more money down the road on a building that you haven't spent any money on yet. Because it's yeah, still there. It's still you know, the house itself is staying, you know, because it's sitting on this ledge. So they're, they're saying that even replacing the, the septic system is not part of a substantial damage. They have not come out to look for substantial damage. In my experience, and Bob and I have talked about this, FEMA's working on structures. They'll replace your furnace and other kinds of stuff in the structure, but I haven't seen them working on the septic systems yet. The property. Uh, the, the property. Because the property washed out. The property between the house and the bridge washed away. And so there's no place to put a septic system anymore, frankly. Mm -hmm. but, the, but they're not replacing property. They're, only repla they're, they're supporting the structures, not property. So it's just everybody's on board with that because he's been making lots of phone calls. And I, I, I sympathize with the position, but I don't think it's going to go anywhere. But I, I want everybody to understand that. I'm not being negative on I, mean, I, I sympathize with his position, but I think the female rules. So I told him that unless the FEMA rules for the new third wave of funding change dramatically, it's my opinion he will, he will not have <coughs> Just so we all understand. I think that's the right thing to tell him. Yeah, I'm trying to be as fair and honest with him as I can. And uh, he's still clinging to the messages he got from other people, and I'm trying to help him understand this is what they were saying, but here's the reality right. as I see it at that point. Um, so anyway. The other piece of that action, and I think we need to be aware of that too, is 
apparently the, there's a difficulty, and you guys may know this better than I, there's a problem with the state diverting water away from a private property. And that when they're talking about moving the stream in front of the fireplace down to the upstream side of the bridge instead of going underneath the road, that it takes the water off his property. And there's some discussions with the bridge people about that. Now I understand you got a farm and somebody diverts the stream away from your farm. This is, may not be the same, but I don't know. But just something that's, that's, that's kind of, yeah. it's part of the difficulties that, that the bridge people, when we have the bridge meeting up coming here on, I mean, they're coming up in September, we need to make sure we have at least some questions. discussion about that. And that they're already talking about in, in the paperwork that I just saw go past us, talking about replacing the, the land, not replacing them, but rebuilding the land between his house and where the bridge was to where the, this ledge right now, that's where the, the creek originally went under the river. Yeah. So there's, there's some complications involving the bridge and right. his property, in addition to merely the idea of purchasing. So it wasn't the little brook that washed his property anyways. It was not. It was the big one. Then. The big one that's okay. But by moving that, because you look in there now, you go down and you can get this, the, the cabin, the uh, channel. 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 That, that's, that was coming on his property. And so he, technically speaking, because it did go on his property, he's correct, as I understand it. If they move it upstream to the other side of the bridge, uh, the bridge people are worried about that, according to what you said. So I don't know how that's going to play out. We just need to understand that that's on the table. Thank you. Now, this gentleman, did we miss you? Uh, no, I'm just waiting for the example. Oh, okay, all right. Oh, I, I would show them to you uh, privately without you having to wait. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I didn't want to interrupt. It was so, so quiet there. Um, okay, I just have a couple of things. Um, I went up to the transfer station today, and Linda showed me the swap shop was cleaned. The Roger. swap shop was cleaned out. Yeah, Roger. when Roger was working on that. Uh, yep, it looks good. So should we reopen it? Well, I don't, I'm not ready to do that yet. I think we have uh, to go down and check it out and look at it yeah. and see. Okay, all right. So I will give Linda a call tomorrow for a bit. Lou and I will be up there and okay. check it out and, and chat with her about that and stuff. Oh, excuse me, one more thing before it's on this okay. contract. The, uh, someone I suspect is the chair needs to put in, in, put in consideration of blank and no dollars. Right, I just fill it in. You'll fill it in. Yeah. Oh, just so you understand. Yeah, I did because I fill in the other one. Good. Thank you. And let's see, this is a this is from Lee Merrill who used to own Curly Fuel and he retired because of sickness and this is just an FYI. Um Code and Code has now purchased Curly Fuel. Barrows fuel that purchased Curly Fuel years ago. They did, and then I think it was Barrows and Cur Curly and Barrows, and I don't know what happened to Barrows. If they went off on their own, does anybody know? Barrows own Curly. They own Curly's. Yeah. So now Coda and Coda bought maybe just that part of it, maybe just Curly. That's what it looks like, yeah. And we're supposed to get the same service and stuff like that. Now, do we have, have they got to go through like active empty or anything like that to bury all their tanks? And I don't know. I don't know if they're adding more tanks there. Well, they probably the old ones out. I heard they're putting underground, but I also heard they're putting propane in. I also heard that they're putting a putting gas, gas station there. Yeah, because we get a letter saying, stating all the stuff. I should have brought it out. Um, they got propane, gas, and diesel. <laughs> Is there going to be a retail gas station? Mm-hmm. Well, well, it's going to be like, yeah. I think it's going to be like, door. Oh, you have a credit card. Yeah. 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 You have a credit card, you can buy it like that. Well, obviously, yeah. there has to be a tank for it. Yeah, there's right. a tank. So, um, this looks like they removed the tank. So they removed the big tank. Right. Over almost a tank. Yeah. They probably need it. Yeah. And one more thing, I wanted to get back to I promised to Mr. and Mrs. Flower on the um discussions. And this is let's see, nothing. It's not 
for you personally or anything like that. It's just a response to your inquiry. Um, you know, at our last meeting you brought up that we have gone into executive session uh, quite a bit of times and you checked back six years. Um, probably to do the proper research, you should have come back to when the first of that board meeting was started, you know, the very first select board meeting. I did print out a copy of the uh, Vermont statutes, ESA 31 executive sessions, and one of our copies too. You and um, it, we, we fall under all of that, and we have been mm -hmm. doing everything right. Um, and each time we have gone into executive session, it's always been noted in a motion. Um, so it was clear that what we went in for um, the board were not micromanaging our employees, we don't have any problems with any of our employees, um, we don't have any problems problems with our town's functioning and running. There have been, as you know, over the last few years, there's been a lot of changes. And things change and executive sessions did come into play. Um, we are not having secret meetings. Um, I feel, personally, I don't know about the rest, but I felt that was an insult to the board because we've been working very diligently to keep the town running and at the same time rebuilding the infrastructure of the town due to tropical storm and rain. That's all I have to say on that. Yeah. I will note that uh, in the last few years we've instituted an evaluation policy for our employees. So many times we've gone into executive session to evaluate employees. Uh, we've also we also hired a new uh, town clerk and treasurer, and those that interview process was part of uh, executive you, you session. You were part of the process too, right? There are, th there are three reasons you can go into executive session. One is for personnel issues, one is for contractual issues, and the third is to evaluate the conduct of a public employee, a public officer. And also real estate. Right, real estate is not real. Mm -hmm. But, um, and I think... The and we followed everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, think, uh, I think once in a while it's announced that you're going into executive but not necessarily why. Well, we can't say, we say no, no personnel issues, like we cannot personnel. And, uh, and I think that uh, probably it's just literally a mis, you know, a misstep, not that we've done it on purpose, but. Uh, right. Because we can't say, okay, we're gonna bring so and so in. Right. Mindset. Because that, that's not fair to our. I know that. To anybody. It would be satisfactory if we said we're going into executive session for a personal matter. Yes. And drop it at that. Actually, and that's required. And that's what we do. That's all we can say. And that's all we can say. That's all you need to say. And that has to go in the minutes. Right. Or contractual. Right. In which we have done that. Yeah. So. So you have to give a reason. Right. right. Which we've always done that. And, and that. and that, you know, is for the sunshine law. I mean, maybe so, folks think that it should be more, but. You know, that's, that's the law. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't have anything else to get. Do you have a motion to adjourn? I would make the motion to adjourn. You have a second? I'll second it. Okay, uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, meeting adjourned at 8.33. Mm -hmm. uh, is that a record? <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs>